They're busting unions in Wisconsin. We got mojitos by the pool. We got a talent for distraction. No reaction. I'm Melissa McClelland. I'm Luke Doucette. And we are the band White Horse. And uh, we are here in Regina at the Machinese Art Gallery. We were drawn to this piece, um, I think, with, especially with the idol No More movement um, kind of exploding in Canada right now and worldwide. Um, I think this was the one that we were kind of um, drawn to as soon as we came in here. Yeah. Really beautiful. I think one of the things that occurs to us simply by looking at this, there's a few things that, that jump out of it initially. Um, it's obviously sort of political in nature, uh, and, and the multimedia component, this, the uh, the collage, uh, makes the imagery fairly easy to understand. Um, but also the wordplay at the top uh, holds too quiet about Oka. There's a reference to the standoff in Oka. Um, so of course this conjures up um, memories of a different time when. Um, when we as Canadians especially are we're sort of faced with the relationship that Aboriginal people have with the rest of the country um, or the relationships that we have with Aboriginal people and uh, we wondered about the stenciling on the top of this painting the bright bold lettering. Yeah and almost to me it, it spoke of the residential schools um, and you know basically the, the cultural genocide that took place of you know um, pushing away the native languages and forcing English and, and our culture on their people. And it's written over rebirth, rebirth, rebirth. Right. So the, these bright yellow or orange letters obscure the words rebirth. We, um, we have a song called Wisconsin that I think if, if we could pair a piece of art with a song of ours, that, that would be the song that this one seems to, could maybe speak to the most. Yeah, I mean, the, the song deals with a lot of different political issues um, that are happening in our world today. Um, it, it, initially, it was the, the first commentary. The Occupy, oh, the, the strikes. Yeah, when, the, when Governor Scott Walker from um, Wisconsin broke the backs of the Public Employees Union, um, that was the initial impetus for the song, was to comment on that. And very quickly, it became about what it's like to be sort of pampered middle class Canadians right. being able to... Well, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say that it's for us to participate in these discussions or these kinds of concepts or these ideas or these movements, it's sort of academic. We can choose yeah. to or not to. It doesn't affect our lives as directly as it affects some people's lives. Yeah, okay. And so the song became more about recognizing that we're sort of bystanders. Well, we were living in, in New York City when we wrote that song. Um, we were living in the Lower East Side. We had this little apartment. And just a, a 10 minute walk down the street, it was the Occupy movement. Um, and it was pretty amazing because as soon as you walked into that neighborhood, it was all encompassing, it just took over. Um, but just being a mere 10 minutes away, uh, you were completely sheltered from that. Um, and I think, you know, this, the song Wisconsin is a lot about that, how you can choose to be idle. You can, choose to put your blinders on um, in our culture anyways. There are a lot of uh, distractions. Certainly some of us um, can choose to. Yeah. There's an interesting thing about the Idle No More movement is obviously there's a huge segment of the population for whom they don't have the choice not to be involved. It right, and it's fighting them. against the idea that some of us actually make that choice yeah. to ignore things that are that are happening around us that are important. Ditches in Zuccotti. We're getting famous by the hour. All our pirates are Johnny, not Somali, trading bad seeds for flowers. Everybody's got a ticket and a backstage pass.